Let's discuss. Hey everyone, it's Rachel back again with another video. Today, I don't have my normal setup as you can probably tell. I was meant to go home and make these videos yesterday, but uh, some weather prevented that. It was very dangerous, I had to turn back around, but I want to get these videos done. So I have what I have here to make these and talk about my top 10 albums in this video for 2022. I have a list of 25 of them. I did a thread of 22 on Twitter, but here I'm gonna talk about my top 10 a little bit. I'll try not to be overly wordy, which I have a habit of doing, but I'll start with 10 and just go all the way down to my number one. So we are going to get into it. So for my number 10 album of the year, that is going to be 156 Silence with Narrative. This is an album that was very much anticipated for me. I was sort of expecting it to be a top five record, uh, but I have a lot of albums on this list. So anything that's in my top 10 is something that I, I really enjoy. This has, I think, a lot of not a lot, but it has more diversity. It's a little bit less jarring to me than Irrational Pull felt. Irrational Pull has some fantastic songs, some great ones to see live as well, but overall, it was a little bit harder to digest for me than Narrative. Uh, Narrative has some huge moments, a lot of, uh, I think, 156 sort of nuzzling further into like the sound that they've made that people associate with them. Some of those spoken word parts, some of the uh, you know, the unity between the instrumentals being able to follow so well with like the vocal, not even, I don't want to say vocal melodies because sometimes it might be something like a slower, it might be actually the, you know, the vocal patterns or whatever, but just really great uh, unity in the instrumentals that seems like, I guess, seems seamless, if that makes sense. But I would say I was hoping for a little bit more of like, um, the wrong sense is my hands down favorite my 156 favorite song by 156 silence and part of that has to do with uh, how cutting some of those big moments are how soft the softer moments are though they're like they're sparse um, and like the vocal pattern on that song is just insane it was so hard to like learn all of the lyrics and and i don't know it was just one that like captivated my attention so i think that was where like my expectations were a little bit different than what the outcome was, but I, I loved the album regardless. My favorite song would be A Past Embrace um, because seeing them live this year, uh, seeing them play that song, it was insane. That final breakdown is just as big of a moment as it sounds like in the song live. So 156 Silence, narrative, wonderful album. I'm gonna move on to number nine. Number nine for me is going to be The Devil Wears Prada, Color Decay. This album, blew me away. It was one that I was very much looking forward to as the singles were dropping. I, I knew this was going to be something uh, that I'd be doing a lot of revisiting with and likely would be one of my uh, favored pieces of work in the Devil Wears Prada's discography. On the channel, I've talked a little bit about this band. I've listened to them for a very long time. I've been familiar with them for a very long time as well. So that speaks uh, a lot because the earlier stuff that I enjoyed from them came out at a time in my life where it was very fitting and now it feels like with Color Decay it's also coming out at a time in my life where it fits in perfectly so um, I think that comparing them is fair if that makes sense um, but because I am where I'm at now and the age I'm at now, I've been through what I've been through, connect to it the way I do. It's a very honest uh, lyrical approach but also from the production standpoint it's phenomenal uh, when you go into songs like Salt with that chorus, um, the breakdowns in Watchtower, saw that live, it was insane. Uh, there are a few tracks which I don't revisit quite as much as my favorites, but I have more favorites than I do songs I don't revisit as much. That would be like um, Cancer for me. I really love it as a closer. Like I mentioned on my like album reaction or stream that I did, I said I really enjoyed, like that one seemed the most lyrically honest, but it's a theme throughout the album, I think. It's very, like, very relatable in a lot of places. Uh, but for me, that's one that I don't do as much revisiting because sometimes stuff like hits too close to home. I talked a little bit about that um, when I was talking about a song that Dayseeker put out this year. But uh, otherwise, it's really not much stuff that I don't revisit. I, I love Broken ended up being one that kind of overshadowed, uh, got overshadowed by Trapped on my first listen and all of that, but then slowly kind of overtook. So that's still happening for me and it's been a while, a little bit since the album came out. Salt is my favorite track at the moment, but this is an album where my favorite kind of changes a little bit. So 
that is kind of my summary of why the Devil Wears Prada is my number nine. I'm gonna move on to my number eight. Number eight for me is The Comfort. Experience everything, live and die. This also has my favorite album art from this year. I will put the album art on the screen here so you can see it. It's very beautiful. I love the sound of this album. This is one that's a little bit different from some of the stuff that I have. Uh, I would say it's kind of in the same vein as, as two other records on my top 10, but uh, it's it's got this sound that's almost nostalgic, but also is like fresh at the same time, if that makes sense. So it's if you listen to like post-hardcore emo music and at any point or now, uh, you may enjoy this record. That is something uh, I would I would definitely say. My favorite track off of this is Love is a Dying Plant. The choruses on here have uh, a lot of moments that are like big hooks and uh, Love is a Dying Plant is a great example of that. So would be uh, Love, Change, Hope, Pain. Uh, conformist there are quite a few where they have those like bigger moments i think that there are like a couple like again two songs that i don't quite visit as much as all of my favorites but i have so many favorites on this that uh, that out like overshadows any sort of uh, you know and it, again like with these albums in my top 10 that doesn't mean that i don't ever listen to those songs or i don't enjoy those songs it just means in comparison to how much i'm listening and revisiting the rest of the album it's not quite at that level so it has like a little bit of inconsistency where further up on my list it won't be like that so uh, this record was one that i wasn't expecting to be in my top 10 though i really dig the comfort i love their they have an ep called love and it's it's fantastic it's super sad uh, which is just my style but this another one where production is is a huge uh, aspect because there are really um, like emotive atmospheric moments that need to have like that touch on them also the vocalist has that sort of voice for me that like gets a little bit gritty, um, really expressive. I love that along with those instrumentals that match up perfectly with like, a, it's a warm feeling album, I guess. And for those reasons, I find myself revisiting and revisiting It Stays On Rotation. Uh, my favorite track I already mentioned. I'll, yeah, I suppose it won't be for everyone, but I, I do highly recommend checking it out. Uh, everyone meaning on my like, who listens to my regular stuff, but uh, I've recommended it in the Discord server. A few people have really dug it, so uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, the comfort, experience everything, live and die. So my number seven is Static Dress, Rouge Carpet Disaster. This My favorite track is Lie Solution, though Attempt 8 is very, very, it switches between those two. It depends on what my mood is. Attempt 8 and Marisol are like my go-to really sad songs. And then Lie Solution is my, Overall, my favorite track probably, there's something about the guitar tone in that track and just, it has a, a certain energy to it that I'm, I'm usually in the mood for no matter what. Um, but yeah, like I said, those super sad <laughs> moments, uh, attempt eight, Marisol, but uh, having, I guess, that energy and like that post-hardcore sound. Uh, and a lot of people will also say like, well, similar to what I said with the comfort, it's almost like um, they use a lot of nostalgic stuff for uh, post-hardcore or rock bands that were in the 2000s and stuff, but pretty much every, yeah, every record on my top 10, I would mention production, so I'm probably gonna stop doing that, but this is another one where it's really important to get in those, uh, those moments that the production to really drive that, oh, it, this is a nostalgic sound, but also really fresh and like recycled. It's not just the same exact cutout, but like, you know, the exact formula that people were using then and then just new sounding production on it or anything. Uh, they, they're definitely a band that has the ability to, they've pushed their sound out more too, like widened with the songs I just mentioned, uh, Attempt 8, Marisol, those really widened the possibilities and expectations that we can have for Static Dress because before that, <laughs> my favorite tracks, well, Safe Word would still be probably one of my, maybe my favorite Static Dress song, uh, but that, and all really most of their discography leading up to this record displayed like their en energy, but like ability to slow it down a little bit, but not like full track status because we really just got like the prologue and stuff. We weren't really introduced to them and this record was our full introduction to their sound it felt like, which was uh, incredibly satisfying. So I love this, I, there, it's a no skip record for me. There's not any like dip in consistency, I wouldn't say. it's all stuff that I, I am revisiting. So, Static Dress, Rouge Carpet Disaster. I'm going to move on to my number six. My number six, Grayscale Season, Do You Like Violence? This is a record, again, that wasn't on my radar at 
the end of last year, really, I, I didn't listen to Grayscale Season at all. I found the song Luxury Depression. I found it at the beginning of this year. It, the record, obviously, it was like the very beginning of this year. So the record was not out yet. I listened to Luxury Depression. I heard that part of it that was like, um, I care, I care, I care. And that part is so well done to me that I, I had to DM them and be like, this is like, so well expressed because it's it's sarcasm it's like i care in a sarcastic way it's a secondary voice um saying that in like a sarcastic way and it's just so well expressed uh, the full record so that was how they got on my radar so then when the full record dropped i heard my favorite track on it which is end sequence and that the vocals on the chorus of that track they just floored me they absolutely floored me there's a lot of stuff that sort of makes you raise your eyebrow or like comes from left field on this record and whether it be like a softer moment that felt like it came out of nowhere or um, a beat that feels sort of like, you know, not, I don't want to say out of place because though it, it goes in different directions and has a, a hint of like experimentation, it stays in, in like this really cohesive, um, like when you listen in order of the songs, I'm not sure how to really explain it. Like the songs can sound so different, but they flow so well together and keep a really concise mood for going in so many different directions, if that makes sense. So there are some huge breakdowns on it, some very interesting and unique vocal moments. Uh, it's just incredible to me. And I felt like this was a, a really underappreciated or under talked about album this year. So if you haven't given it a, a try, please do. I cannot recommend it anymore. Uh, then yeah, that that would be the the underdog of my list. I think Possibly there's one other one that I'll mention as an underdog, but uh, yeah I 100% have to to throw out grayscale season for anyone who hasn't listened to it They are a band that went from not on my radar to being a pretty much weekly if not every other week Listen for me. So grayscale season. Do you like violence? Oh the closer perfect opener perfect closer those are really big deals for me. Uh, I love an opener and closer, setting the mood and, and closing out the album and like uh, kind of wrapping it all up. It's incredibly important to me. So those were big checks. Uh, some of my favorite openers and closers for this year. Number five, Counterparts of Eulogy for those still here. This album is another one. I'm obviously a person who emotionally connects a lot with music. Uh, it did that for me, but it also has a lot more of Brendan's singing, which is something I loved on Nothing Left to Love. I felt like it was a, a newer direction for the band that, while I love their older stuff and their tour for this album was amazing. The set list was a perfect blend of stuff off of this album. And it was my first time getting, finally getting to see Counterparts too. Um, so they kept a lot of old stuff still on the set list. It was very well like paced. Um, my favorite track off of this record is Sworn to Silence or Whispers of Your Death. Whispers of Your Death is still a track that can make me cry and I've listened to it so many times, but it's it's just, I don't know, the, the lyrics, the meaning behind it, knowing the story with it, but also beyond that, you have tracks like uh, Flesh to Fill Your Wounds. That is a, That one will be an honorable mention breakdown of the year for me because I saw it live and it was just, fantastic. Then you have stuff like Soil 2, which really appeals to not only people who are getting into Counterparts now, but really appeals to uh, the older Counterparts fans. Uh, it, it just goes in every direction I would have wanted from Counterparts, even if I didn't necessarily know. A Mass Grave of Saints closing them out really took it and, and finished off the record perfectly. As I mentioned before, talking about Grayscale Season, uh, an opener and a closer is very important to me. Uh, going into from 726 into Whispers, uh, talking about how much I love and am attached to that song, that was a great way to start it, but A Mass Grave of Saints, perfect way to end it. Uh, there's so much, there's no, no skips for me on this record either. It's very consistent, high quality. So Counterparts, a eulogy for those still here. That is my number five for this year. Number four, Ithaca, They Fear Us. This is a band that a lot of people have, well, I say a lot, a few people who I'm closer with or who I talk about music a lot with had mentioned Ithaca to me before, Joe, <laughs> who might be watching this, but I didn't get around quite yet to listening to them. You know how that can be? It wasn't like I knew who they were and was like, nah, I'm not gonna check this out. I hadn't listened, hadn't listened 
hadn't listened, finally did my live stream, one of the very few live stream requests I did this, request live streams I did this year. Uh, Lexi from Discord, shout out to Lexi, uh, requested the title track off of They Fear Us, and I immediately was like, what have I been doing? And that didn't even end up being my favorite song, though the chorus on that song has to be, I didn't put it in my, my favorite choruses from this year, but it is, it is up there. That was the song that really grabbed my attention. But then, now my favorite track would be The Future Says Thank You. Lyrically, that song is something I, I am just super in love with, but also the instrumentals. Uh, it has, um, what I was saying on the Discord event was like, it's got this, like some of the, you know, the classic like sound in breakdowns, and, and in, but it goes in different places for the riffs. Number five is a riff I chose for my riff of the year list. Um, that's a unique sound to me. They Fear Us has some really cool riffs in it, uh, but also Hold Be Held closing the album shows a different side of this band. It's such a beautiful track. Uh, it's another one that made me cry on my first listen. And then you have other tracks in there too. Uh, Fluorescent is phenomenal. So this is another no skip record. It feels like it's not jarring to listen to because they, they step outside of like their songwriting feels a little bit different in places. It's not reusing the same formula, but another cohesive album, a great closer. This was not a band I listened to obviously before this year, but they are a band I am constantly listening to now. And another band I can kind of, if I'm sad, I'm gonna listen to Hold Be Held. If I'm mad, I'm gonna listen to The Future Says Thank You or They Fear Us. You know, it's got a lot of variety for uh, the moods that I typically cycle through. So that is my number four for this year, Ithaca, They Fear Us. Number three, this one was very unexpected for me. This is a band I really liked before this year, but recently I have fallen in love with them. That would be Gatherers and their record Mutilator, which came out, I think this is the most recent thing that's in my top 10 that has dropped. And I have listened to this record about, mm, I don't know how many times altogether. I have like 600 something plays on it uh, in the last week. So I have taken, I've gone from really enjoying it to being obsessed with it. Uh, there is not a single bad song on this, but as you go through the last four songs, they just end the record perfectly. This is another album that isn't, it's a little bit different from the rest of the stuff that I have on here will really appeal to those who like post hardcore, um, enjoy sort of like, a, like something a bit softer than some of this stuff. They have some moments that are really uh, pointed. 12 Omaha Solemn Certainty is most likely my favorite track on this record, but uh, Honey on the Morrow is my second track. I could I could just list every track to you and be just perfectly fine with that. Uh, their choruses have different feels to them, like um, the song structures are different with each song. When you go to 12 Omaha that I was just talking about, it feels completely different uh, in structure and songwriting um, than if you were to go to uh, the beginning of that, really any of the beginning of the album there. But at the, like, the same thing I was saying about some of the other albums, it's extremely cohesive. Uh, the, the topics that are written about lyrically, I very much enjoy. I'm lyrically attached to this album. And as somebody who likes to write lyrics, who likes to write a lot, uh, that's something that's like a big bucket for me. It's not like, oh, I'm going to make this album my album of the year only because of the lyrics. That wouldn't work for me, but it's, it's a big factor. Um, and a factor that can really drive a record up for me when I enjoy the sounds. Um, and this is another one where production is just, it drives the little details so much further. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. It, atmosphere is, uh, really plays into the emotion that's present in this record. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it about even with each record, so I'm not gonna blab too much about this. Um, I am just in love with this. And so it's my number three. It started off at number 13 right after I heard it um, because it's, it's a big, I try not to put something right at the top of my list unless you know I'm sure, but it went from there to seven to five and then up to three. And I feel like it, it has the potential to even keep going if the year were longer. But that is my number three, Gatherers, Mutilators. Number two, Vatican Ultra. This record is phenomenal. It has, at the same time as it has like those ass beating breakdowns, damage is one of my favorite breakdowns. And it's not even, like, was it really meant to be this cold? And then the instrumentals that follow, uh, the title, not title track, but um, Ultra Gold, that you have that, but then when you have the choruses, Where Heavens Collide is my favorite chorus of the year. I'm gonna make a video about choruses, but that's my favorite chorus of the year, Reverence. 
Uh, I only allow myself one chorus, one breakdown, you know, per album um, or release or whatever. So once I picked Where Heavens Collide, that canceled out Reverence. But if I were a person who picked multiple, you know, multiple choruses or whatever from the, I would pick Reverence as well because that is that is right up there. Uh, By Your Love showcases that same side of Vatican, I think. Uh, so you have those tough moments, the riffs. Mirror Dream is just like one ridiculously insane, one ridiculously multiple riffs. That makes absolutely no sense. But you know what I mean? It's just like a, a riff mind screw of a song and I love it. Uh, but then at the same time, you go further into the album, um, further meaning the end, and go down to Did You Ever Notice I Was Gone. It features Iris, ex EXE, Iris Executable, uh, which uh, Madeline, who runs that project, is married to Michael Sugars, who is the vocalist of Vatican and actually helps, um, I, th I believe it was the chorus of Where Heavens Collide um, that she wrote. So she helps with some of the writing. I don't know. I, I, I'd asked, but I think it might be something we'll eventually talk about on the channel, like their writing process, because I'm gonna try to do more of that stuff uh, next year for content. But anyway, she did con contribute to that. Um, I saw them live on Alpha Wolf's headliner, and it was insane. I got like one video that was 17 seconds. It was like my, oh no, nine seconds or something. It was the longest video I took the whole night. And during that, I got pushed onto the stage in the best way possible. I was having the time of my life, but uh, just really tough, but also has, there those choruses, um, yeah, it drives it way further for me. Having both of those sounds, like uh, think that damage breakdown, uh, that ending breakdown, think reverence chorus where heavens collide, um, did you ever notice I was gone as an entire song? Uh, the breakdown in By Your Love, going from you know that chorus to the breakdown, stuff like that. Um, the breakdown in Where Heavens Collide, I just, uh, it's, it's a really special sound, it's unique, and it's for me. Vatican Ultra, my number one album of the year, which I have not been very discreet about this at all. I don't think it will be super surprising for anyone. Fit for an Autopsy, Oh What the Future Holds. It has been my album of the year since it came out in January. It has remained my album of the year since it came out in January. It's the, the album I would give a 10 out of 10. Um, one of the, it's the only one on this list. I mean, very rarely give a 10 out of 10 but that is one that is perfect from beginning to end to me. And obviously that's my opinion. For my taste and like what I like, it's a, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned openers and closers. This one, the game over. As soon as I heard, oh, what the future holds in the beginning and it, that you don't even need much more than just where he says, oh, what the future holds and then it breaks down. Uh, but you get a lot more than that. Ending it with the man that I was not. I'm not gonna get into it because this will be like a 15 minute segment. That song is phenomenal from beginning to end. I know some people uh, didn't like that song at all and it wasn't their favorite, but um, you know, the beginning having that singing, I remember hearing it for the first time still. And I listen, you know, y'all know, I listen to a lot of music, do a lot of streams, a lot of videos and stuff, but I can still feel that same feeling as when I heard The Man That I Was Not for the first time. Um, and that's really special. In Shadows came out last year. It's still my favorite song on the record. <laughs> that chorus uh, would be, again, my chorus of the year. I didn't make those lists last year, but uh, it was my chorus of the year, probably, um, after the sun sleeps. <laughs> but anyway, Different Autopsy did it perfectly. Uh, it's it's uh, an album that's well-rounded. It's got contributions for every category that I have. Chorus, riff, breakdown. Uh, the production is insanely good. Um, I have multiple tracks for each category that I wanted to contribute. It's just incredibly well done. It's expressive. The man that I was not having that emotion and like just, you know, when I listen to it, I guess the best way to wrap this up would be, uh, I can listen to it now. I've listened to it, I don't even know. Like, I couldn't even guess to me. I think I have something like three or four thousand plays on it from this year i could listen to it again right now in full and i could still get that same feeling that same like excitement in my stomach as when i listened to it that first time on stream uh, so for that there's not really many other albums i feel that way about especially not one that's been out for almost a full year and so for me it's it's fit for an autopsy oh what the future holds and it's not even close and yeah so to remain in the top spot all year untouched i I'm not super surprised by this, but at the same time in January, I was like, can an album that's not in Ben Anime do this? 
again. So that's those are those are my albums of the year. Uh, my two honorable mentions, my 11 and 12, Monuments and Stasis and Mood Ring. Um, yeah, Mood Ring, Stargazer. Sorry, God, I got distracted there for a second. Mood Ring, Stargazer, two really incredible albums too that I would put once again on the the production uh, front. Also. Um, choruses on both of those albums, melody, uh, those are things I really look for. Uh, yeah, Opiate is everyone's favorite track off of Monuments, I feel like, but mine is Somnus. The riffs on that track are just... Uh, but yeah, those that's my top 10, two honorable mentions. Let me know what your top 10 looked like in the comments and what you think of my top 10. I'm gonna make a video in January for my, my guesstimated top 10 list to see how wrong I am for next year. But yeah, thanks so much to anyone who's watched any of my videos this year, done any of the live streams, or watched any of the album EP reactions. I appreciate you. I'm very much looking forward to next year, and Happy New Year.